Move to agenda item, consent agenda item K, approval of the second and final reading of an ordinance amending chapter two of the Code of Ordinances of the City of New Braunfels, Texas, section 2-39B, to eliminate the need for citizens to provide their addresses when addressing the City Council during meetings and to change the time for a person to speak to three minutes. We have uh, had the meeting on this last week. This uh, became an, a, a consent agenda item because the vote by council was uh, unanimous, 7-0, which uh, Ms. Acevedo, I will confirm with you that when it is a, a 7-0 vote, uh, that it, goes it can on to the become, consent. Uh, automatically becomes a consent agenda Correct. item. Council member Spradley has requested that it be pulled and I appreciate his, his effort in doing that. So we will address agenda item K as we normally would with any other item. Council members, are there any comments or questions uh, based upon this particular item to uh, address the issue with not uh, necessarily having to provide their addresses uh, for when they speak? due to concerns by council uh, by members who have attended council meetings in the past and have indicated that there has been some issues with being threatened because people know where their address is and the second thing is is for efficiency purposes and to add more people to the dais or to the podium to be able to speak cutting the time from five minutes to three minutes so that you can have ten people speak and not five. And so are there any other questions or, or comments by council? Mayor, I appreciate you pulling this item. Uh, I do have some questions uh, that were brought up at the last uh, meeting on this agenda item. I just want to be sure before we take another vote, and my question is to our city attorney, does the ordinance change, does the ordinance change infringe on the First Amendment rights of the citizens, or is there a constitutional right to speak at city council meetings? The, the change doesn't, we're going from five minutes to three minutes. That is not um, any kind, doesn't implicate any kind of violation of the First Amendment. Um, the right that the citizens have to speak here is under local law, an ordinance that was adopted originally back in 1996. It's been amended a couple of times since then to allow for citizen comment on items not on the agenda and to allow for comment on items that are on the posted agenda. Those time limits have been there um, as well for both of those parts of our agendas. Um, in 2019, the state legislature amended the Texas Open Meetings Act to, um, to make that state law. So that applies not just to, you know, some, a lot of cities were doing what we were doing, which is allowing citizen comments on all the posted agenda items, but not all. So when the, the state legislature made that amendment to the Open Meetings Act in 2019, it requires all governmental entities that are subject to the Open Meetings Act to allow citizen comment on all items on the agenda. State law doesn't require that we allow citizen comment on items that are not on an agenda, but this city's ordinance um, does give citizens that right by ordinance. That's not a state law uh, right. However, um, if we do, and since we do, allow citizen comment at the beginning of every meeting, there are that those limits on deliberation and how you can comment. Uh, you know, when I was talking, when Mr. Davis was up at the podium and you know, you can provide factual information or recite policy, that's under state law. And that's only if a city or an entity adopts rules allowing comments on items not on the agenda. Um, the, the US, there is no federal law that really addresses timelines. State law also, doesn't um, give a time limitation, but it does allow entities, governing bodies, to adopt reasonable rules for those speakers, and it specifically says including time limitations. And so that's it's in line with state law, it's in si line with federal law, um, and again, it's just um, amending what we've had from five minutes to three, allowing more people to speak in that 30-minute window per side. So um, I don't know if that answered your so we're question. We're following all the rules and regulations given by the state and the federal government that doesn't affect First Amendment rights, right? Uh, like I said, under state law, there is something that does uh, require governmental bodies to do what we've been doing for a long, long time, allowing citizens to speak 
Um, it does also allow the governmental body to establish time limitations and other reasonable rules for just the conducting an orderly and efficient meeting. That's all we're, we would be doing with this amendment, so there's nothing in state or federal law that sets a time limit or anything like that, but we are authorized to establish a time limit. And there's a difference between agenda items and citizens' comments? Citizen comment is that section that we have at the beginning of our agenda. Um, we've had that by ordinance, a citizen has that right to address items that are not on the agenda, but that otherwise do fall within the purview of a city council. Um, and so that's what we have at the beginning. That's not required or mandated by state or federal law. That's just something that the city council many years ago decided to do. Um, you have to give your name and address, just like you do for the citizen participation discussing posted agenda items. For the action items on the agenda or uh, consent items that are pulled from the, agenda, from, from the consent agenda, the ordinance has also for a long time allowed citizens up to five minutes uh, per citizen to speak on an item of interest to them. And so, you know, you really can't vote uh, before you take that citizen input on those items. Some items have to have public hearings under state law, you know, certain zoning cases, you'll see postings that say public hearings. Uh, but again, we're already taking public comment regardless whether it's a public hearing that's required by state law or not. And in 2019, the state caught up with us in that, case, in that regard and is mandating that all governmental entities do what we've been doing for a long time. Um, so allowing comments on both items on the agenda and not on the agenda. And we also seen a slide where it had a lot of different cities uh, spread out across Texas, but do you know how much the time limitations are for uh, Como County Commissioner's Court? You know, I, I didn't until, until somebody asked me that question recently. I had to go look it up, and it's three minutes at the Como County's Commissioner's meeting, yes. All right, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Ms. Acevedo, uh, at the last council meeting, there was a, an example given of Frisco and how they handle public comment, did, did we did we reach out to Frisco and have, have do, did we do any research there on how they do that? Um, I'll be frank, this isn't my agenda item, it's the city secretary's, so I'll defer to their office to see what, what they may have done. Sorry about that. Mr. Schwartz. Councilman Bernard, thank you for your question. Um, I did do some research today by reaching out to the city of Frisco. They do things a bit differently than we do here in the city of New Braunfels. Uh, what they do is kind of a mixture in the sense of they have a citizen comment at the beginning, just like we do. Uh, they do a five minute uh, limit when they go up to speak. However, if there is a group of 10 or more, they will limit to three minutes with council's um, agreement. So that is also with 10 people on the same topic. So they do not limit people to go up and speak during citizens comment if there is an agenda item on the agenda. However, if they choose to speak on that agenda item at citizens comment, they are not permitted to speak on the agenda item when the agenda item comes up. In, a, in addition to that, and thank you, Mr. Schwartz, for, for doing that investigative work. Uh, we had a citizen provide us with this information a couple of weeks ago, which is uh, was uh, w which was interesting and, and glad we have this. It's, uh, it's interesting that in the decorum of their meetings, uh, the groups wishing to address the same topic are asked to have a spokesperson, okay, instead of allowing everyone who wishes to speak to that topic step up to the podium and either take three or five minutes, depending on how many people are wishing to speak. They also require a public meeting appearance card, and that public meeting appearance card, which was something that, that the staff had provided for, for our consideration several weeks ago when we began considering this, was the opportunity for people to sign up prior to the meeting, whether it be online or whether it be signing up outside and then being provided here at the dais with who has signed up and what topic they're wishing to talk on. And so those were two items that, that uh, Frisco has also added to what Mr. Schwartz has, 
as presented to us as well. Uh, so that's, that's where uh, we appreciate that information. It certainly gave us an eye-opening uh, opportunity to see where we, uh, or at least in my opinion, feel like that we are uh, doing exactly what the citizens have asked except just limiting the time from five to three minutes. We also, according to the ordinance, have the opportunity to adjust that depending on the item and also depending on uh, how many people have chosen to come and speak on that item. If we want to extend the number of people that speak for three minutes, that's certainly the prerogative of, of the council. If we want to extend the amount of time total from 30 minutes to 40 minutes, we certainly can do that as well. So it's, it uh, is not something that uh, every one of those cities on the city list that you mentioned, Council Member Spradley, about being presented to us with all those yes, three minutes, and only a couple with five minutes, certainly different in every place. But I think the, whoever put this ordinance together in 1996, I guess, when, was when it, I believe I understood the date, uh, they were thinking ahead and they were thinking about the community. And I think what we're continuing to do is think about the community and we're listening to the people who have expressed their concerns. And we will continue to do that this evening and then take uh, uh, the, second, uh, the second vote on this particular ordinance. So if there are no other uh, comments by council, we will open this up for public comment. We will begin with those who are in opposition. You have five minutes. By the way, this particular ordinance will not become effective until May 15th. So this is not an effort to uh, undermine the opportunity for citizens to understand uh, any item that might be presented on, on these agendas while this particular topic has been discussed for the last several months. Jim Holster. Uh, I'll test this. Oakwood, somewhere in New Braunfels. That's it. No, two, three, four, Elmwood. Uh, let me, there we go. There was reference to uh, Frisco, and I thought last time I, I didn't really get the presentation done in time. It's my fault. So, and it was referenced again, and let's just kind of go over it. Uh, and on the research, I, I had a couple of questions, but I, I think you did a good job on it. Frisco uses, it's a city twice as big as, as New Braunfels, probably more complex. A five minute rule for 10 speakers, uh, ordinance sequence to three minutes to ensure the public is heard if there's more than 10 speakers. They do have a card. I talked to them also. They do have a card that they can sign up for, but they also told me, and I don't know if you had this detail on, the, I'm talking about the upfront where people can come up and speak, citizens. They said they've never run into an issue because their council wants to hear from, the, from the, uh, the public. So they've never really enforced that or applied that. And I'm not, I didn't ask them about other agenda items. They very well may. So next screen, please. Or do I need to click it? So I was going to ask last time, and I didn't, didn't do it, and we all know, in a metro area, a rural, bigger city than us, smaller, larger, where is the city located? It's north of Dallas, complex area, high tech. And this, uh, they eat five-minute rule or three-minute rule. Well, they obviously use a five-minute rule, but on open communication, they don't even enforce that. Because again, their council has said over and in newspaper articles, they want to hear from the citizens. So to them, it's important. And this is their actual ordinance pursuant to the city of Frisco ordinance. Each member of the public wishing to address the city council shall be entitled to speak up to five minutes unless 10 or more members of the public are present to speak on a single agenda item, which I think that's an agenda item down and not the open session, um, in which the city, in which case the city council may by majority vote, not by the mayor, but by the majority vote of the council, uh, allotted time, uh, reduce the allotted time from five minutes to three minutes per speaker to ensure as many people as possible have the opportunity to speak. So that's their ordinance. And it's an ordinance y'all choose not to, even though they're a bigger city, not to use. So to reduce the speaking time. Okay, next item. Next presentation, I should say. 
many, in my opinion, citizens communication, the way it's being proposed, is a solution in search of a problem. And I heard that, actually you used, Mr. Compost used a, a statement similar to that when there was a presentation about building a parking garage downtown. And you said it's, you know, people didn't have any trouble walking, they could maybe plop to, walk two or three blocks away to get to their event. And it was healthy for them because they're walking on all our sidewalks. And instead of spending millions of dollars on a uh, sidewalk, you said, well, it sounded like it was a, uh, a, a, a solution in search for a problem in the city. Basically, you voted correctly in turning that down. At least I appreciate it. Not that it was correct. I appreciate your vote. And there has been, in the past, but prior to the 1990 or 96 date, the citizens always came to New Braunfels Council meeting, and there was a gentleman, Mr. Meyer, was always at every, and it was actually recognized by the council for his years of coming. He came to every meeting. And he, he'd always start his presentation, can we come together and reason? Next slide, please, or I'll get it. All right, so I, I, there's been this statement that we want to get more people up here. Well, I, I looked at recent council meetings, and well, in March there were five, one, two, zero, four, just look down there, two, one, six, and I assume we didn't exceed the 30 minutes, so they must have been speaking less than five minutes. Four, seven, again, I assume we didn't ex exceed the 30 minutes. Two, eight, next slide. Again, August, five, eight. Now, at that meeting, that was kind of, and then six, again, we didn't exceed the 30 minutes, so they're all speaking less than five minutes. Or else y'all would have called a halt to it, I think, in terms of efficiency. Five, eight, June, five. Now, I even went back further and looked. Typically, uh, when Baron Castile was mayor here, it was not unusual that we would go for several sessions. There'd be zero, one, hardly anybody coming up to speak. We never had this 10, your Mayor Bauer, I mean, I'm sorry, Mr. Bowers wants at least 10 people to speak. Now, so what does that mean? Well, when you look back, so why are you, what you're trying, what you, it's like a false flag. You're planting it out there because nobody's exceeding these time limits that you've established, but now you want to establish time limits. Mr. Holster, your time's up. Thank and you for your comments. One other thing I want to say, the gentleman who sang here tonight, I didn't appreciate his music, but did you know y'all had a singer here called Song of the River? And she had three minutes and 45 seconds. She won't even be able to sing in the future. <laughs> because three minutes is it. Or she's gonna have to pick up the tempo quite a bit. Thank you so much. Timothy Davis, 810 Holly Street. Um, I don't mind saying 810 Holly Street because I've said it so many times here. Um, it's just automatic. I say it to people that I meet. It's ridiculous. Um, but uh, I haven't been back until recently because this came up. Um, so I did reach out to y'all, you know, my time's run here. Did y'all reach out to me? You wanna answer that? I didn't get anything. Any emails? No? So it's confirmed. Okay, so the whole point. People trying to offer solutions. I did offer a solution, Mr. Mayor, you said let's look at it. I gave it to the staff, nothing. No one wanted to work with the citizens. Y'all's plan is arbitrary. It is arbitrary. It is just basically blatant. We're looking around, what is everyone else doing? We're not looking at what works for us and a solution that that addresses the concern you have, but then goes and gives the opportunity to change it when you need it, not every time. Mr. Holster just illustrates it. We haven't collaborated, folks. I haven't talked to him since the last meeting. This is the pulse of people that actually take the time to think about these things. What we have is failure to lead. It's an absolute failure to lead. This is, this is not calling any one particular person out here. It's just a lack of leadership. The people want to speak, and, and I shouldn't ramble on for five minutes unless it's important what I have to say. But sometimes you need time, and, and time and time again, we see developers given 15, 20, even last meeting, 15, 20 minutes. I didn't count it, I meant to go back and do that. Time and time again, given all kinds of time to talk when the citizen is gaveled at 30 seconds sometimes because we're out of line and there's a, you change the way you do everything. Sometimes it's, it's citizens can talk here, it's uh, for and against, and you change it, it's never the same. Constitutionally, 
That's the law. Ms. Acevedo, with all due respect, this does, because we have established, like you said, in 1996, we have established the time people can speak. The Constitution states that restricting speech is against all law. So if our time is established that has worked and you never, the city did not make a compelling argument, period, for why we are doing this. This does come under United States constitutional scrutiny. This is unconstitutional. The people have established that five minutes is the time needed to speak. Clearly. I'll leave it at that for now. But I presented a plan, and I'm not going to go over it now. You can find it on lots of places, cnbrj.org, which I uh, am not, no longer affiliated with, but I support. Um, Save New Braunfels, a new blog I've started. Um, I'm not putting a shameless plug, it is on there. You can go to Timothy Davis on Facebook and you can find information. I'm just trying to share that with the citizens. I have a couple copies here left. Um, Mr. Holster may have them, if anyone would like to see my plan that I gave to the city. My plan is just one of many other ideas. Frisco's plan works. Plenty of ideas work. The first part of this, obviously people don't need to be forced to, tell, to say their address. But this doesn't work. This is not the people being allowed to speak. This is not leadership. And that's what I asked tonight. I don't remember one of you, Mr. Spradley, I handed out probably a couple hundred flyers for you, sir. I don't remember any of them saying anything. I don't remember you guys. I don't remember when you all just ran. I don't remember anything on your flyer saying we're not going to listen to the people. We're going to reduce their time. I don't remember that. And now we have election, Mr. Blakey. You're running again, thank you. I, I've, I've respected most of your decisions. I, I've respect all your decisions, but most of them have been fantastic for the city. Mr. Herta, we've had really good conversations, sir. Do you want this to be your legacy that you took the speech of the people away? Now, it's one thing in, in, in citizens communications, okay? It's another thing when someone comes up here and they've just had They've never spoken publicly in their life. And they just want to, they've got a big high rise coming up with all this development and stuff. And there's all this stuff coming up. There's a parking garage gonna be in their backyard. And they have, they don't, they're nervous. Like I am now, but they're 10,000 times more nervous because they don't speak all the time. And they're scared and they need their five minutes. They need every bit of that. Folks, I challenge you, please get up here, be brief. We, don't, we only have probably 20 minutes left because I used all my time and I'm sorry. Be brief, come up here and just say you either support tabling this item and coming back with the citizen's idea, a plan that gives you the tools you need to every once in a while when a big item comes up to find a solution to let more people speak, but not to arbitrarily take this away from the people. Please, will one of you please stand for what's right? God bless you. No nails. Susie Pratt, Evergreen Estates. Um, I tried to time this for five minutes, but I tend to stutter, so I ask that you give me a little bit of grace. Uh, several months ago, the Finance and Audit Committee, of which Mayor Rusty Brockman is a member, decided to give $500,000 in utility assistance and the majority of the rest of the $10.9 million in American Rescue Plan Act funds was allocated to several ethical conflicts of interest that involved funding nonprofits, some of which, which Rusty family members and city employees or family members of city employees are or were on the board of. If anybody has any questions, I have the documentation. Simple truths like this are what the city of New Braunfels has deliberately worked to suppress. No campaign, no PR campaign would be this deliberately inept and increasing engagement if it was not intentional. Several a and PR experts would agree. I have seen lots of time and money spent on selling citizens on a no tax increase bond that will indeed increase taxes and no attention to the upcoming mayor and council elections. City council is an important outlet to have to express, for citizens to express their concerns in a way that holds you, the council, publicly accountable. 
Tonight, we will see our council vote to approve a rate increase and an erroneous shortening of citizen speaking time, despite thousands of objections and emails on the matter. This is an outlet which you have purposely worked hard to suppress. With only a few weeks left in your term, this is the item that you've decided to push forward deliberately despite your constituents' many objections. Perhaps it's because people have things to say like I have, things you don't want the public to be very aware of. If the city of New Braunfels was so transparent, I wouldn't have to submit 15 complaints to the attorney general because my records requests haven't been answered sufficiently. If New Braunfels was so transparent, one of you wouldn't have called my employer twice to threaten them to fire me, to discourage me from speaking at public meetings. Nor would you have sent my husband's employer an anonymous letter to do the same. If NB was so transparent, you would counteract my questions with answers instead of writing them off as conspiracy theories and refusing to respond to my emails. If this was a relationship, I would tell the people of New Braunfels to run and get a protection order. The amount of gaslighting and abuse here is enough to give my ex a run for his money. If you don't want us to speak, it's obvious. You don't represent us. And just like a common predator, you take silence as consent. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? <laughs> Nicole Lawson, I live in Oak Run. So I'm the one who originally came up here and asked about the addresses, and I appreciate that, but it's on for discussion. I don't understand why these two things are lumped together in one ordinance. The addresses can be one ordinance, and the time thing can be one ordinance. It seems like they're just lumped together to get it done. So um, as far as speaking, I've sat here. I know you guys have seen me sit in these meetings. Except for NBU, the puppies, some like the coffee roaster zoning, and a couple of other hot topics, there's only city staff and a couple of people in here. Otherwise, it's empty all the time. I beg people to come to these meetings. I knock on doors, I make Facebook posts, I do everything in my power to get civic engagement in the city of New Braunfels, and it never happens. It's not the citizens that are taking up these meetings' times. I've sat there with my phone and timed city staff, and I'm not disrespecting them. They're smart people. Their presentations sometimes are 40 minutes long. Developers sometimes are 45 minutes to an hour, 30 minutes. They're never less than 30 minutes, never. And then we have the hearings. Unless it's a hot button item, there's nobody up here discussing it. A lot of times you guys vote, there's nobody up here that even can test things. Most of the time it's me and one other or two other people sitting here. And you know that to be true. It's not the citizens taking up your time. <clears throat> But I do thank you that we don't have to put the addresses up anymore, if that passes. But I guarantee you, I'm going to go sit down, and as soon as this is over, nobody talks. One of you is going to go, motion to pass, and the other one's going to go, I second it, and all of you are going to vote, and it's going to pass. Because that's what happens every single time. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? My name is Michael Alexander French, uh, 1161 Creek Canyon. I am uh, I'm totally against this, and there's a lot of arguments against it. Um, it is our Second Amendment right. Well, I'm sorry, our First Amendment right. But um, a lot of people that do show up, it's probably their first time, and a lot of people are a lot of regulars. Everyone knows everyone here by their first name and their last name and their address, too. But the two things should have been separate. The addresses should have been separate. They should have been voted on separately because I know everyone wants to get rid of that. What they don't want to get rid of is their time to speak. And uh, it takes a lot of courage to come up here uh, just to, to face you guys, it does. It's, it's intimidating. And the cameras, the people behind you, it's intimidating. 
and a lot of people have a good message. When they do finally come up here, if they see something going on in the city they want to argue against, maybe they put a presentation together and they don't have enough time to even finish it. But I, I do say that I'm against taking away two minutes of our, of our time. I, I, I guess I'm, I'm against that, but I am I'm for taking away the addresses. But please, please let us keep our, our five minutes. We really do need it. And uh, <laughs> I don't want to say the citizens are going to get a little more upset than you see today, but I guarantee you it's not going to make anything better. It's not going to get anything better. Um, but I'm, I just want to say keep, keep the five minutes. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? I'm Kim Huntsman. I live at 1340 Camellia Lane, New Braunfels, Texas. Lived here a while. The fact that we're even talking about taking minutes away from us being able to speak, like you said, that is our First Amendment right. As an American, that is my right. Then you gotta really think about this. You have some people, maybe an elderly person that needs another minute to be able to talk. I'm not a public speaker. I don't. I don't do this kind of stuff, but the fact that we have to even come up here and just bring it up, it's just kind of disappointing, to be honest. Um, the fact that minutes are taken away from us being able to speak. As a community, we all are supposed to be working together. I mean, I love this town. I'm not going anywhere. This is home. Just like all these people back here, and just like all of y'all up here, this is home. We need to, you know, be able to speak and talk and work things out. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? In uh, Stephen Fikes, uh, 562 Roadrunner Avenue, um, I speak in opposition. Uh, and I want to come at this at a little different angle. Marine Corps veteran. Army veteran, veteran as well, we all took an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. In case anybody here didn't realize we are in the United States, we're in the great state of Texas. I call it the Republic of Texas. It happens to be in the United States, both flags of which are right behind both of you. Could we please in the spirit of the Constitution that we wore an oath to could we maybe table this, break it apart, put it together the way the people would like it? Um, you know, if five minutes goes over, I'm really not opposed to the Frisco uh, idea. You know, putting a card on, uh, the address has got to go. Things are toxic in the world right now. Uh, social media is making it ridiculous. I've actually had people at, uh, off of social media show up at my place of business because they didn't like something I posted on Facebook. A few of you who are my friends know these things, but um, I'm fairly animated. Poor Rusty knows these things. And again, love you, brother, in Christ, and I don't apologize again on that, but I'm in opposition to how it's written now. Let's break it apart. Let's table it, fix it, maybe even take a vote, you know, in here. You know, let us vote on it. It's ours. It's not yours. It's ours, and it's our time. It's your privilege to listen to us. It's not our privilege to speak to you, right? And one of these days, you're going to remember this when you're back down here, when your terms are over, and you're going to be on this side of it, and you're going to want that time should you need it, right? So um, that's it. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Quick points. First thing you notice, I came up here with my phone because I put it started when we came, so I didn't run out of 30 minutes. It'd be really great if we had that up on the screen so we could see, so people realize what time they've got left. Second thing is, you know, I've heard the characterization that we're responding to the desires of the people with this ordinance. Now, I've been listening to all of these here, and the majority of the people that I've heard speak have been opposed to it. There have been some that have 
So yeah, we can work with that, me being one of those. And I've probably disproved that in the last two months. I think I've gone five minutes about six times in nine presentations when you have something long. But you know, I realize at this stage, we're not gonna change anything. Um, but um, I do think we really need to realize the characterization of this being the people's desire. That's not correct. Thank you, God bless you. Anyone else? Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Okay, anyone wishing to speak in favor of this particular item? Consent agenda item K. Okay, we'll close the public comment period. I have, a, I have some more questions. Okay. Can you explain the First Amendment right and, what, and how this is different? Uh, so a city council meeting, once you open it up and allow for any kind of public comment, it is not a traditional public forum, but it is a limited or sometimes called a designated public forum. It still has, the speaker still has the same uh, First Amendment um, protections it, with the exception of the ability for the governing body to establish reasonable rules, um, time limitations, uh, where they can speak, uh, introducing themselves, those kinds of things. And so those are all very common throughout the country at all kinds of meetings in different states. In the state of Texas, there is an Open Meetings Act like most states have, and in 2019, ours went ahead and codified the requirement that for these individuals to have a right to speak on posted agenda items. So they have a state law right under the Open Meetings Act, and they have a right under our local ordinance and have had that right for many, many years. Um, the, and the First Amendment was triggered when the city council first started allowing for citizen comment. It went from, you know, it, it be basically creates a limited public forum. Again, the only difference is that there you can change rules, um, you can expand them, you can contract them, um, you can um, abridge them throughout the years, and the councils have, the ordinances have been amended here and there. And that is not um, taking away any rights for them to come and speak on those agenda items. And even the fact that they can really just speak to the item that's before the governing body, that's an example of a rule that can be put in place in a limited public forum. You couldn't put any such rule outside in a traditional public forum, like a town square, a park, a sidewalk, somewhere where someone's protesting or just maybe preaching, you know, you couldn't put a time limit, you couldn't, you know, you could ha would have to come up with other rules that maybe um, relate to time, place, and manner, like we do here. Uh, it, our rules have to be and, and are content neutral. That means that you can't discriminate on, on a speaker because you disagree with their point of view. You know, if they're speaking for something and you're against it, you couldn't cut their time shorter because you don't like their message, okay? So they do, the rules do have to be content neutral and the way the ordinances have been drafted over the years, they don't take into account that kind of content. Everybody gets their same amount of time, um, whether it's a posted agenda item or citizen comment. So all that is in line with the First Amendment. The First Amendment doesn't talk about five minutes or three minutes, it just says reasonable uh, rules. And um, the courts have determined that setting time limits is something that is perfectly within the, the state legislature and the city council's authority to do. The state legislature did not set a time limit in 2019 in its bill, but they did give cities the authority um, under the Open Meetings Act to go ahead and place such time limits. We already had them. We had a five minute time limit. Reducing it to three isn't violating anyone's First Amendment right, but it is reducing the amount of time, the face time that they have when they come up here. So that's a separate issue, but it isn't a violation of a First Amendment. We're not stripping First Amendment rights or anything like that. Um, we're not, we wouldn't be bringing something like that to the governing body if it was unconstitutional. Um, I, I, would, I, I couldn't recommend that. 
Um, but it is a policy decision. If you wanted to go from five to eight or five to three or five to four, uh, that's really between the people that are coming to speak and, and the elected officials to, you know, to decide how you're gonna vote on that. All right, thank you. And my next question is, do we have to have both together? Can we separate them? If they're, they're both part of the ordinance, is that correct? They're currently both in there. They're currently both in there. I mean, you know, if we're not ready, if the council doesn't feel like they want to proceed with voting on both the address, dropping the address requirement and reducing the time change, you can parse out. You can, somebody can make a motion just approving one of the changes instead of both of the changes. And then you vote, put it to a vote. And if majority votes in favor, then then you give staff direction to bring back the other item or continue studying it or make a committee or whatever it is, just like you've done in the past. So that is something you could do if you didn't want to vote on both items tonight, if you don't feel you're ready to vote, vote on both items tonight. Um, that's really up to the governing body as well. I would like to consider splitting them both and yeah. just vote on the address and then maybe go back and relook at the Frisco scenario. Uh, yeah, I would like, I, I think that's where you're going. I was gonna make a motion to, um, if we could do the no addresses. From day one for the last three years, I've heard it and I'm like, I don't even know why we're doing it. It's been three years and we finally got rid of it, it's fine. Um, I'm not necessarily even saying with a comment I'm, that I'm not against the three minutes. I actually probably am for it in, in a lot of ways. But listening to the communications and listening to what you guys are saying, I'm with you. I, I'd like to split it and say no addresses. Boy, that we, we had that years ago. We should have just got it done. But I'd like to table, I'd like to make motion to table, make the motion no addresses and table the talk about three to five minutes. Is that a motion? Well, I guess so. I thought okay, you were making it, but second, I was just jumping I'll second in. his motion to, <laughs> to approve. We have a motion and a second. I'm perfectly fine with that angle, and, and I'm perfectly fine uncoupling these it's too, but if we're going to send staff direction to give us more information, I believe there are over 1,200 or roughly 1,200 municipalities in the state of Texas. Staff gave us a grid of some municipalities last time, and some of the folks in the audience, which I understand, said, well, New Braunfels is different. We're not those, right? But then also it's been brought up now. We've narrowed over 1,200 municipalities to one municipality. Look at Frisco. So with all due respect to Frisco, if we're going to really look at this, I think from the spirit of transparency and the spirit of equity, we need to look at not just one other municipality. Moreover, Frisco requires a sign-in which we, with address, which we don't want. And I'm not a fan of the cards. I think if people get here, I think Mr. Davis has mentioned this before, if I misspeak, forgive me, uh, where you're here on a different item, but then you hear about another item here and you want to speak on it, right? Well, if we implement a Frisco, Frisco type rules, I understand, well, then he didn't fill out a card, so he wouldn't be able to speak as I understand the Frisco rules. So I'm not a big fan of people having to fill out cards. I'm not about more red tape. I personally think I don't like that model on that piece of the Frisco model. I'm not against looking at the five versus three, but I just, I'm, I'm very cautious on homing down on one municipality with almost 1,200 plus in the, in the state. And for some reason, we want to, somebody in the audience or us wants to home in on one. We need to look at it in a broader context of that. So you're saying we're not done on the, that portion? Well, I just think that if we're no. going to direct staff, if we're going to revisit that, if we're going to revisit that, if we, if we do, we need to really have a better direction of staff to get some more data and make an informed decision with citizen input but also some other data. I mean, Mr. Davis, with all due respect, came in with some different ideas that he said in the email, but it wasn't specific to one municipality, you know? Um, and I'm, I, there's I nothing against Frisco, it's you. just, yeah. I don't think you can pick, I mean, just scientifically, that doesn't make any, it's not valid. <laughs> you right. need to look let's, at a broader, let's, let's you know, take our time sample look size across on the, that, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I could pick a municipality that limits it maybe to two minutes. I'm not saying one exists, but of 1,200, I probably could find one. Doesn't mean I agree with it. But I'm just saying, you know, we can find one that meets whatever, but let's look at this in a greater context. Yes, sir. Um, I'm for postponing this for a completely different reason. The ordinance doesn't read the way that we first motioned it with the addition of stating if you're a resident, DTJ, or neither. I'd like to know, I don't care if, to know your address, but I would like to know if you're a resident and if this ordinance affects you or not, or if you're coming from someplace else to advocate for something that comes in front of this. Uh, but that doesn't, I don't see that in the ordinance. So that's why I would like to have this postponed is to have that added in here because we already agreed to that and it needs to be put in. 
Any other comments or questions? I'm, I'm fine with that as well with uh, Council Member Willis, um, but, but I'm very cognizant of uh, sending city staff down a rabbit hole to look over these municipalities about who's doing what, all these fine details, and they come back and we realize we waste a lot of men and women power on this thing, and we just kept it the same at five minutes. So in the end, we may just want to just leave this one alone and let's not make the address be given. I'm completely fine with that. I, you, can, you can find out where I live, but it doesn't matter to me one way or another, but I, I think that the address shouldn't have to be given. But I, just, I think it, what we're asking city staff to do is just to run down a trail of 1,200 um, municipalities and pick some that are doing three minutes and then they come back and we end up keeping it at five minutes. So I, I'm good with postponing it. I don't even I don't know there's much validity in, in sending them down that path and and uh, I mean five minutes is five minutes. I, just to clarify the comment I made, I, I don't disagree with you at all. It's just I heard some of my colleagues keep saying, well, Frisco this, Frisco that. And my only comment was is if we're gonna start using okay, one city is the benchmark that we need to look at a broader context. That's where I was trying to go with that. But I don't want to put any undue burden on staff no, as long as we don't say Frisco was the gold standard and that's what we're using. That's where right. I was I, trying and, to and I brought, I brought that question up. I, 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 my apologies for that, but uh, it was brought up from a from a, a resident here and, and I wanted to see some feedback on that. Uh, I think this is something that the, the citizens are very adamant about and you know, they're very adamant about not giving their address. Okay, I'm good with that. Very adamant about keeping it at five minutes. I'm good with that too. Um, I, I just don't, man, this is a lot of things to get in the weeds about, and I just don't think this is one of them. So, thank you. I, I have to say that, <laughs> Council Member Campos. I, I have to say that I agree with Council Member Herta. Like, I mean, this isn't that important to me, and we have already spent in the aggregate more time on this issue than we would have spent if we just didn't address it there than we then we would have saved if we go to three minutes so i'm done voting on this like i mean i'm happy to delay but i'm done with this topic I, I don't see any reason to revisit it if we if we choose to to just vote on the address topic then let's just do that and move on with our lives but, but remember what we did was listen tonight right but just to clarify miss acevedo council member willis brought up the question about the way the ordinance was written so if we choose to address half of this tonight can we address his piece of that, or does that need to be brought back? In other words, on well, the- to be clear, I think what Will Councilmember Willis was pointing out that was it, his original motion, although it wasn't, it didn't clearly translate to staff that made the amendments. But I think what you were saying is, and if we go back and watch the video, I, I you did say something about the sign-in sheet or something like that, though there isn't a sign-in sheet. Um, so I think that staff didn't, they kind of didn't really consider adding a sign-in sheet because that hadn't been a part of the whole conversation at the last meeting. So if you're just clarifying the motion that was approved at the last meeting, that would help us. Yeah. If it's differing from what was approved at the last meeting um, substantially, then we would probably want to bring it back for another There's meeting. a sign-in sheet in that forum where they write their name and their address. Okay. Remove the address, put city limits, ETJ, or neither. So that's not, that doesn't require an ordinance amendment. That's just policy. That's not in to the code. To reflect what they say up here. They're going to say ETJ, city limits, or neither at the, at the podium. So we know when they're talking to us where they sit in this on this issue and then have the sign-in sheet reflect, reflect the same requirements that are at the podium. Then I suggest, um, right now the motion doesn't really say that. Right now, the motion before the body is just to eliminate the address requirement, but it doesn't say to then require that the person state whether they reside within the city limits in the, the city's ETJ or neither. It doesn't, that's not in the motion yet. And if that's what we, what the, the intent is, that should be, that could be offered as an amendment. Um, since we haven't voted on Councilmember Blakey's motion, he could withdraw it or he could amend it um, to reflect what you want. Uh, but the body should probably discuss that. 
Well, I'll start that discussion. There I think go. if we're going to if we're going to uh, make all of these adjustments that we think we possibly had understood before or that we don't know about, then my my suggestion would be is to follow Councilmember Willis's recommendation to postpone, so that we can get this right, as opposed to making a vote tonight on either one. And that would be my uh, uh, just. I'm good with that. I th I think you just bring the address back for us to vote on in two weeks, and let's let's kill the five minute thing uh, because I think what originally started as. Uh, let's be a little bit more efficient, has almost created one of the most inefficient processes I've seen. And, and it, it's, I'm with, I'm with uh, Mr. Compost over there. I'm, I'm just finished with this. I'm finished with voting on this kind of stuff. Uh, I, I just want to vote on the address. And if that comes up in two weeks, great, fine. Uh, but I'm done with the, with the time limit thing. I, I think we could solve this with a proper motion if Mr. Blakey would withdraw his motion and Council Member Willis would make a motion to approve the address along with the motion he made at the last meeting, which included that citizens at the podium offer their name and whether or not they live in the city of New Braunfels, the ETJ, or outside then we could be done with this tonight and they would be satisfied and we would be satisfied and we can move on with the business of the city. I therefore retract my <laughs> original and I look to uh, Councilman Willis to close us out here. I make a, po a motion to postpone. No, 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 no wait, wait, wait. No, <laughs> Okay, so he's already made the motion. Yeah, hold on. We're going to do Andres. Okay. I'd like to make a motion that we pass the, or drop the requirement for the address, and we replace that, as Council Member Willis mentioned in the last motion, with a name whether you're a resident of New Braunfels, the ETJ, or non-resident, and drop the minute, the, the, time any, limit, any, the time anything limit thing having to do with time. Second. Second, yeah. Okay, we have a motion by Council Member Campos to do some drop press. the address, <laughs> add on the sign-in sheet the location of and verbally at the podium, but sign-in sheet which would say either your your district or ETJ or elsewhere. Sign-in sheet is, doesn't require any sign at the podium. Okay, at the podium. And seconded by Mayor Pro Tem Bowers on that motion. Is that correct? You did not. Right. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Okay, Ms. Wilkinson, would you please call roll? Councilmember Campos? Aye. Councilmember Willis? Absolutely. Mayor Pro Tem Bowers? Aye. Councilmember Spradley? Aye. Councilmember Hurta? Aye. Councilmember Blakey? Aye. And Mayor Brockman? No. All right. <laughs> just, yeah, as soon as I start up. Yeah. Before, yeah. Okay, we will take a five minute.